Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Practice Course. In this video, we'll implement multi-class MNIST digit classification with Perceptron. So in the last video, we saw a zero detector with Perceptron. Now what we'll do is, we'll combine multiple binary classifiers and devise a suitable scoring metric for solving the multi-class classification problem. So here, a scalar makes it very easy for us without modifying a single line of code written for binary classification to achieve the multi-class classification. All that we are going to do is we are going to use a label binarizer and we'll convert the, the, the label into, into the binary representation. We instantiate a perceptron object and we call the binary a label transformer which is label binarizer we call fit transform on label binarizer by passing the uh, by passing the label vector and you can see that the label binarizer has gotten us this particular representation of our labels so our original label was 5 so you can see that the sixth value is 1 the label was 0 the first value is 1, the other values are 0. So for 4, you can see that the fifth value is 1 and rest of the values are 0. So you can see that after performing label binarization, our, our, our label, label vector has become a matrix of size 60,000 by 10. And this is the training label matrix. And remember that we had 60,000 examples in training and 10,000 examples were set aside for test. So the first column in this particular label matrix is a binary label vector for the zero detector. The next one for, uh, the, for detecting digit 1 and so on. So now we simply call the fit method on the perceptron object by passing the feature matrix and the label matrix. And you can see that the shape of the weight matrix has become 10, 784. So we have 784 uh, weights for each of uh, 10 classes. And there are uh, 10 values for bias, one corresponding to each class. So here when we call the decision function on the perceptron object, we basically get 10 different values of the decision function. And we can choose the one, we can choose the class that has got the highest value of the decision function. And you can see that the highest value uh, corresponds to the class 1. We can use classification report in order to get the precision recall and F1 score for each of the each of the classes. And you can see that for class 0 we have precision of 0.98 and recall of 0.95 with F1 score of 0.97. For class 7, we have precision of 0.91, recall of 0.94 and F1 score of 0.92. And overall accuracy is 0.90. We can display the confusion matrix for all the, for all the classes and you can see that how the, how the labels are accurately predicted. So accurate predictions are on the diagonal and the, uh, the misclassification are of diagonal. So you can see that uh, you can see that there are some misclassification for uh, digit uh, 8 as well as for digit 9 and digit 8 for example is getting confused with uh, digit 3 and also with digit 5. 
and whereas digit 9 is getting confused with digit 4, there is some confusion over here. So you can also see that there is a confusion between digit 2 and digit 3. So we have seen in regression that uh, it's usually a good idea to write all the pre-processing operation and our estimator in a pipeline. So we are creating a pipeline uh, for the perceptron. So we are first performing scaling with mean max scalar followed by the perceptron estimator. And we call the fit function on the pipeline object. And we can get the confusion matrix and this is a confusion matrix for, for, the, for the zero detector. So in machine learning techniques, we were generally advocating use of what is called as learning curve where we have iteration on x-axis and trading loss on y-axis. So there is, uh, there is no direct way of obtaining such a learning curve in sklearn. So here we are making use of partial underscore fit method in order to plot this learning curve. So what happens is here we use or make use of partial fit and we run the partial fit, uh, partial fit in, uh, in an iterative manner and for each iteration we, uh, we record the loss and then print that particular loss against the iteration. So far we have not done any hyperparameter tuning for, for perceptron. So we accepted the default values of learning rate for perceptron. So now here what we will do is we will try to perform a grid search for the, uh, for the learning rate of perceptron. So here we specify the parameter grid with the parameter ETA0 which is the initial learning rate. And we are setting um, a parameter grid with, with different values which are, uh, which are in the range 1, 1 by 2 raised to uh, basically uh, these are inverse uh, powers of 2 between 1 and 6. So you can see that we are trying various values for learning rate which are 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.0625, 0 0.03125. These are different values that are that are uh, tried out for, for the learning rate. And after performing the the grid search, you can see that the best learning rate was 0.125. And why this is the best learning rate? Because you can see that the, the ranking based on the test score, the, the learning rate of 0.125 got the rank of 1. So this is the best learning rate uh, obtained through the grid search. We can compare the training loss with the default learning rate of 1 and the 1 obtained through the grid search. And you can see that the, the training loss is, is much lower for the 1 that is discovered through the grid search. We can also obtain the best estimator through grid search using best underscore estimate underscore member variable and for the best estimator for the zero detector we got the, the F1 score of 0 0.95 for class 1. So as an exercise it will be interesting to compare the classification report when the learning rate was 1. You, you can find this earlier in the, in the collab. So finally what we'll do is we'll visualize the weight vectors obtained through the perceptron algorithm. So here we have uh, various, um, you know, various digits 
So the ground truth is minus one, but it is predicted to be of class one. And remember, this is these are all uh, we are solving. We are uh, showing the weight vectors learned through the zero detector. So that's why we have two labels minus one and plus one. So this one is seven, but it is predicted to be uh, zero. So these are some of the some of the misclassification, which are predicted. To be zero, even though they are they are not zero. So let's try to uh, first print the weight vector of of the of the zero detector. And this is how the weight vector looks like. Uh, fen uh, the Fenter values uh, or the Fenter color denotes a higher value of the weights, whereas the darker uh, shades represent lower values of the of the weights. So the lower values over here are minus 60 and higher values are uh, upward of 20. So we can calculate the activation by multiplying the weight vector and the uh, and, uh, and the pixel values. And we can look at the activation map of different digits. So for this particular digit, this is the activation map that we obtain by multiplying the, the pixel values with the weights. And you can see that when we perform the linear combination, the, the value that we obtain is 22.9, which is greater than zero. And hence, we, uh, we uh, basically label this particular uh, image as, as zero. Let's look at another image which is uh, which has five in it, and this is the activation map for five. And if we calculate the linear combination, the value is coming out to be minus uh, two hundred and ninety three point thirty three. So since this value is less than zero, we uh, we label this particular image uh, with minus one. So this is basically a non-zero image. So this is how you can visualize the activations and weight vectors. So in this video, we studied how to perform multi-class classification with perceptron. So what we did is we uh, took the label vector, applied label binarizer transformation to it and obtained one hot encoding representation of, of labels. And after obtaining the one hot encoding representation of the label, we used exactly the same code that we used for the binary case and performed multi-class classification with perceptron. We also studied how to visualize the weights and the activation maps for different digits. And this will help us in, in detecting any issues in prediction.